Canada is vast in size, extending across six time zones. It's diverse both in geography and its peoples. With a population of 31 million stretching mostly along its southern border, Canada has developed an economy that makes it a leader among industrialized nations. Canada became a federation in the 19th century. What were primarily English-speaking Ontario and French-speaking Quebec were joined by other British colonies and territories to form modern Canada. Historically, the Canadian Federation was most influenced by the relationship between its two founding communities, the English and the French. That notion of people living together who are not homogeneous, uh, uh, where there are collective identities that uh, had to share the same political space and find a way of getting along, uh, is, has deep, deep roots in our history. And then, uh, Canada's ten provinces have a great deal of autonomy. The Constitution gives them control over 16 vital areas such as health, natural resources, and education. Probability of spinning a six, are you? As in many other federations, the provinces establish their own language policies. At the federal level, English and French have equal status in all public services, in the workplace, and in Parliament. We must ensure that the North has greater control of its destiny. We must ensure that the people of Quebec recognize themselves within Canada. And we must ensure that Ontarians see their ambitions fulfilled. Un fier Québécois, un fier Canadien Français, et un fier Canadien Quebec is the vibrant heart of French culture in North America. There are seven million French speakers in the province today, about a quarter of Canada's population. But as late as the 1950s, the language of business and many services in Quebec was English, as was the economic power base. This started to change in the 1960s. Concerned, I think it would be silly to go on being always spectators, even in those other fields, looking at other guys doing the job and Quebecers uh, more or less uh, being people who look at the trains go by. A major set of constitutional reforms in 1982 established minority language rights for both the English and the French across the country. So what you have is at the federal level for all uh, purposes of the national government, uh, two official languages are supported and accepted and you can get service in either of those languages in most parts of the country if the numbers of people using it warrant. Depuis l'application de ces nouveaux droits à l'éducation, au service dans la langue de la minorité, uh, je crois que nous avons de plus en plus la reconnaissance des droits des minorités et s'enrichit certainement La Fédération canadienne. This French school in predominantly English Ontario is part of the province's French school system. It serves a population of about 400,000 Ontario francophones, a small minority of the province's population. Without a school, you don't have a flourishing language. So the fact that there are now French schools available to French-speaking students across the province is an enormous step. Les deux parents viennent du Maroc. Mon père vient du Canada et ma mère vient de l'Écosse. In addition to French schools being available to French-speaking students across the country, there are also wonderful programs to help youngsters who aren't francophones, learn French. This French immersion school in the western province of Alberta is two time zones away from Quebec and the heart of French culture in Canada. But here, English-speaking children spend most of their school day speaking French. These children and their parents consider the French language and culture to be part of their identity as Canadians. So they're developing um, a capacity to speak French, to understand the other main linguistic communi community in Canada, and that's 
I think, a, a very good example of something that Canada has pioneered, French immersion, and that is working very well to help the two linguistic communities understand one another. Ça n'a pas été facile de concilier les intérêts de toutes les provinces et protéger aussi les intérêts du gouvernement central. Mais sa pratique, après 20 ans, nous amène à croire qu'elle a été un élément très positif dans l'évolution de la Fédération canadienne dans le droit des minorités et dans le sentiment des Canadiens comme Canadiens. The indigenous peoples of Canada were here before either the French or the English arrived, but they are still struggling for full recognition as founding peoples. You've primarily got three major uh, indigenous groups in Canada, the Inuit uh, in the far north, the Métis that are spread uh, primarily through Ontario to Western Canada, uh, and the uh, First Nations populations. And within that, you've got over 50 uh, unique languages uh, with about 630 or so uh, First Nations communities spread from sea to sea to sea. In its early days, the Canadian government made Indigenous peoples wards of the state. Over time, their traditional land-based economies were seriously weakened, and their living standards today are far below the Canadian norm. And so the struggle that we've had since then is trying to, to break uh, this whole uh, cycle of dependence on the federal government so that we can make a, a contribution not only to our own betterment, but to Canada's betterment. Across the country, Canada's indigenous peoples have been negotiating with the federal government for more genuine self-government. They want control over matters such as justice, education, and land and resources. I don't support the problems of Manitoba. On the grand sheet, are sitting up front. And that's not only a challenge for Canada, but a lot of other uh, Federalist countries within the Americas and indeed uh, globally. Federalism has faced many challenges in Canada, including efforts to amend the Constitution, separation referendums, and rising Aboriginal aspirations. But Canadian federalism is resilient. It has the ability to adapt and evolve. Paradoxically, we started out as a highly centralized federation. Um, and with the passage of time, we have become a highly decentralized federation. And yet we are prosperous. And there's a sense of national identity and affiliation, a degree of patriotism and so on. And the country seems to work.